Let me explain. A forest, seen from the air, is a complex and beautiful thing. When you look closer, and an individual tree is as complicated as the forest. A single leaf is a miracle of biology. A molecule unfolds many layers of meaning before our eyes. An atom is too intricate for us ever to understand. Everything we see is, is like an opening flower from which simple truths emerge to, to make order out of chaos. And the music's like this too. That interview with Gregory Glast was recorded shortly before his untimely death last month. And now, some more of his music. about the web of time. I don't believe in it. I think it's just a convenient excuse for you to use if you don't want to do something. I think you'd better take that back, Truman. Or what? You'll abandon me to the Daleks? I do not want to continue with this pointless argument. She is not dead. We could go back. Don't even think it. She's beyond our help now. They could be doing anything to her. Truman, Torture, I'm dissection. warning you, she's already dead. How many times do I have to tell you? The Dalek Emperor said she was exterminated. His mind was within me. I know she's dead. We never saw her body. We didn't have to. You don't have to count your fingers every morning to know how many you've got. Oh, don't patronize me. It's the only way I can get it through your skull. She's dead. I know you don't want to accept that. I certainly don't. But you can't blind yourself to the truth. Truth is relative. Very deep. Don't patronize me. Then don't talk rubbish. Look. Look. Let's assume she is dead, okay? Let's, for the sake of argument, assume that Rhea is dead. She was killed by the Daleks on Gallifrey. I can accept that. It means that there's no use going back for her. We'd be risking our lives for no good reason. Yes. But if we go back in time and land on Gallifrey before Rhea is killed, then she won't be dead. She'll be alive and we can rescue her. It's a philosophical nicety, Truman. I don't care about philosophy. In reality, she won't be dead. Isn't that the only important thing? The web of time still holds her. If we rescue her, she'll only die some other way within a short space of time. Is that what you want? Don't believe in the web of time. That doesn't matter. It believes in you. 
I can't get through to you, can I? I can't remember how many times I've had this argument before I know your every line. Then you know what I'm going to do next. Your walkout, they all do. Of the TARDIS, if you like. Or the argument. That's up to you. If only I knew. <laughs> if only I could be sure. Be sure that you really want to go back for Rhea. The real Truman would, I've got no doubts on that score. But how do I know you're the real Truman? I don't. If it's one thing the Daleks do better than anything else, it's replicating things. And if you're not the real Truman, then the reason you want me back on Gallifrey is that the Daleks want me back on Gallifrey. So in this case, my dear Mr. Crouch, I hope the furthest thing from your mind is a Dalek mind. I'm sorry, Truman, but I have to know. And this is the only way I can think of to find out. Doctor, I... What exactly have we here? Next stop, Gallifrey. Permission to re-enter normal space, sir. Granted, Mr. Thub. All hands prepared to exit hyperspace on my command. Navigator, I want to fix on right hour Ayana Tropos as soon as possible. Lay in your course. Velocity one astronomical unit per hour. Approach the planet perpendicular to the ecliptic. Not to peep from them yet, sir. You scanned the entire quark net. We're close enough to intercept radio waves now, sir. Not a sound over the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Not even a chat show. Return to sublight velocity on my mark. Mark. How advanced are the inhabitants of Rytel Ryana Tropos? It's a resort planet, mainly visited by tourists. The standard of civilization is very high. It needs to be to attract the holiday crowds. Luxury items, gastronomic foodstuffs, the works. Locals are mainly settlers from neighboring wells trying to separate the tourists from their bank balances. I remember... The what sort of I... culture do the locals have, Mr. Tharp? No, sir. They can't afford the luxury foods and clothing, so most of them are living close to subsistence level. It's an old pattern. Keep monitoring, I want to be sure. Of course, sir. But I think we're going to be too late. Again? Yes, sir. Again. Convincing explanation ready. Oh, Truman. I was ready to give you the benefit of the doubt. Why did you have to go and do something like this? Yes. You tried Gallifrey, all right. You played your hand too early, my friend. Now I know you're a Dalek agent for sure. Catch me if you can. Wherever you are, Truman, I hope it was an easy death. You deserve that much, at least. Doctor, the doors are closed. Let me in. You're just a copy. Come on. Nothing more. It's cold out here, Doctor. I have to admit you're good. Doctor, you're not going without me. Doctor! You're so good, in fact, that I can't take the risk. Just because we argued. Just because you could be a Dalek replicant, a full stereoscopic copy of yourself, controlled by the Daleks. Because I wanted to go back for Rhea. Truman, you tried to bring us back to Gallifrey. What else can I think? You gave me no choice. I had to assume you'd been copied and somehow smuggled on board the TARDIS. Then why didn't you leave? I... I couldn't be sure. Thank you. Don't mention it. 
If you're going to kill me, do it now. If I do that, I'll never get to rescue Rhea, will I? You mean we're not on Gallifrey? Well, not unless it's changed dramatically since the last time we were there. But the Consul says it's Gallifrey. I know. I set the controls to test you. So where are we? I don't know. Shall we take a look? Drive. It's been 30 degrees to starboard. So here she goes, pilot. Starting to geostationary orbit on my mark. And mark. Smooth as a baby. Good work. Report, Mr. Tharp. No signals from the planet, sir. Shall I initiate a long-range sensor scan? Yes. And launch a skimskip as well. Sir? I want a two-man crew in a skimskip to hedgehop across the surface of the planet. They can start at the pole and work southwards on a spiral scan. If anything moves down there, I want it found. Impressive, isn't it? Amazing. The spray just hangs in the air. Waves and low gravity. It's a nice combination. It's a paradise planet, then, is it? So it would appear. Look at the hotels. They look more like sculptures. Keep thinking they're going to fall. Another advantage of low gravity. You can construct buildings that would give an architect heart failure on any other planet. It doesn't feel that low. Shouldn't we be floating or something? You've got used to it. Try a jump. A what? A jump. Go on, try it. All right. Oh, oh! Ah, I see what you mean. Be careful on the way. Ah, oh, down. Thanks for the warning. Allow me to explain the difference between mass and inertia. <laughs> Another time, perhaps. <laughs> What's the ground made out of? It seemed to give beneath me. Sort of soft like grass. Some sort of organic silicoid compound, standard spaceport surfacing. Spaceport? Sorry, didn't you realize? But the place is deserted. Um, perhaps they've all gone for a swim. Whoever builds a spaceport close to the ocean? Lots of races do. Name one. Uh, the Gahuti? The who? The Gahuti. They're an amphibious race. Very mysterious. Never talk to anyone. So this is a sunny seaside resort. They don't take holidays. And it's always the first time. They're allergic to sunlight. I imagine it brings them out in nasty blisters. <laughs> Fun people to be with. Besides, they live across the other side of the galaxy. This isn't their patch. What do they look like? No one knows. Then how do you know they're amphibious? Because they build their spaceports close to oceans. <sighs> that is a circular argument. <laughs> and that is a hotel falling down. What are you down. saying about the advantages of low gravity? I don't understand. Behind you! They're all beginning to crumble. What do we do? Any suggestions? Run! Good one! Damn. 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 Calm down, Mr. Tharp. Sorry, sir. It's just a frustration. A frustration is simply an emotion, First Officer. Curb your emotions. I run a tight ship here, tight and controlled. Yes, sir. You resent my orders, Mr. Tharp? Sorry, sir. Your heartbeat has increased by five beats per minute. Your skin resistivity has dropped by seven ohms. Your pupils have contracted by three micrometers. You resent my orders. Not resent? Then what? You expect too much. Perhaps. You don't understand frustration. You expect us to act like... Like machines. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to offend you. You cannot offend me. Are we safe? Are we ever? I mean, at this moment in time. The local architecture seems relatively stable. What made the buildings fall? Was it a trap? Pretty wasteful one if it was. Did we do something to make them fall? Could be. If the substructure was in an already weakened state, the vibrations set up by our movements might have caused a fracture in the matrix. Meaning? Once one went, the rest followed. Domino theory. Which implies... That the buildings around here are stronger for a start. And also that there's no one else around, because if there were, they would have set the buildings off already. So much for that theory. Where's it coming from? Difficult to tell. Around that corner, I think. I have a bad feeling about this. Help me, please! What seems to be the problem? Doctor, I think... Oh, quick! Get this young lady back into the TARDIS! What about you? Ah, uh, don't waste time! Ah, uh, hello! Nice creatures. Good creatures. You don't want a nasty doctor to eat, do you? Of course you don't. You want some apples, don't you? Yes. Nice, crisp apples. Uh, yeah. Um, tasty apples. See? There you are. Nice, fresh apples. You see? Much better than a tough, stringy Time Lord, isn't it? And plenty more where that came from. 
Good creatures. Nice creatures. We're going to be friends, aren't we? Right back in docking base, sir. Crew proceeding to debriefing. Is there any point we already know what the report is going to be? Not entirely. Oh, apart from the creatures. Yes, the creatures. Those I do not understand. On every planet so far. Total destruction, buildings crumbling, the population vanished, and rampaging groups of monsters attacking everything, including each other. What does it all mean? Shock troops? Aliens sent to create panic, perhaps? By whom? And how would you explain the distorted shapes of the creatures? Every single one is an entire species in its own right. No two ever look the same. Experiments? Biological experiments? You mean someone is breeding these things? Why not? It's too complicated. Why bother in the first place? There are easier ways to destroy a planet. I suppose you're right, sir. Conglomerate will not, I fear, be pleased with my lack of progress. Surely they will understand, sir. I think not. They were loath to relinquish control of their largest cruiser to a robot in the first place. Sir, such racism died out a millennia ago. Feelings like that take a long time to fade away, Mr. Tharp. Conglomerate is a very conservative organization. It wasn't easy working my way up through the ranks. But you did it, sir. No, Mr. Tharp, I didn't. Sir? I cheated. I married the chairman's daughter. Ah. Strings were pulled so hard they almost broke. And I made captain. However, you got the post. It doesn't affect your abilities, sir. Abilities which won't help me if the board of directors want to remove me. They're reasonable men, sir. Intelligent men. But they are bigots who don't approve of mixed marriages. This fiasco is just the excuse they need. I've never served a finer captain, sir, robot or not. I'll tell that to anyone who tries to take the gold reserve away from you. I appreciate the sentiment, first officer. Anybody ever mentioned? Yes, they have. But I know. How can it? I mean, how how is it? I mean, oh God, I don't know what I mean. I don't understand it either. All I know is it works. Hasn't your friend ever explained it? Loads of times. Every time he tells me something different, I don't know what to believe. It's incredible. This is only part of it. You mean there's more? How big is this thing? It's huge. Level after level, corridor after corridor, stairs up, stairs down, lift shafts, ramps, room after room after room. Do you know? Once I started walking in a straight line, just to see how far I could get, I took enough food for three weeks. I slept in whatever rooms I could find. And? After nine days' continuous walking in a straight line, I ended up back in the console room again. You're joking. <laughs> I wish I was. Hey, what are these words scratched onto this control panel? Justice will be served. Never mind that. They go deep. Yes, deeper than you think. What was that? I don't know. I'll take a look. Isn't that your friend? Difficult to tell with all that dust. Where's it all coming from? The buildings are coming down behind him. And they're getting closer, those What's creatures. What's that there? Where? Uh, through the rubble. Over there, see? No, I can't... Oh, wait, yes, I think I can. A sort of moving wall. Yeah, that's what I thought. Look, the dust is clearing a little bit. We should be able to... Oh, my God! Run, Doctor, run! Happy, and that was nothing like a nice job. What are those things? Hungry, you must be. Fionara, Fionara de Mithagra of the House Dalek. I uh, enchanted. I'm the doctor, the doctor of the chapter, Pridonia of the planet Gallifrey. You've already made the acquaintance of my travelling companion, Truman, I believe. Fionara's been telling me how she got here. Really? A fascinating story, I'm sure, but before I hear it for myself. Oh! Oh! Uh, uh, I really think we should move from here. They can't get in, can they? Of course not. But I don't want the paintwork damaged. Truman! Yes, Doctor. Put the kettle on, would you? I'm sure Fionara could do with a cup. Break orbit, Mr. Tharp. Understood, sir. Navigator, lay in a course for... Where exactly are we going, sir? Get us into clear space, First Officer. We'll decide then. Sir, take us out of the plane of the ecliptic navigator, three astronomical units, then heave to. And then we wait. What for? For it to happen again. A music student. How fascinating. Oh, not a very good one. Is there much call for a music academy on a paradise planet? Oh, I don't study here. I'm from Ompla 3. Ah, major or minor? <laughs> major, of course. Where is that? 
It's the nearest solar system. It's not too far away. About three hours by warpship. So how did you get here? I've got my own. Warpship? Isn't that expensive? Oh, it's only a tiny one. Was only a tiny one. What happened? It crashed. I was just coming into land when suddenly everything went haywire. How do you mean? Well, the controls wouldn't respond. She just slipped down to the ground and broke up. I ejected just in time. How high up were you? Only a few miles. Did you notice anything strange, anything unusual? Well, there was air traffic control. Or rather, there wasn't. They usually pick me up about two AVs out and assign a corridor to me, but they didn't seem to be there. I tried to call them, but there was nothing but static. You've been here before, then? Oh, yes. Rital Rayana Tropos has the best concert hall for parsecs. One advantage of a paradise planet, it caters for the highest common denominator as well as the lowest. I've been to loads of performances here. I've got a season ticket and everything. I was coming in for a concert when I crashed. The planet was deserted when you arrived? Too right. My eject capsule landed just before you found me. I was just trying to find a working comlink to contact the Academy when those animal things attacked me. What were they? I'm not sure. They seem to be made up of lots of bits badly put together. Yeah, I noticed that. Very odd. Some of them had three or four heads. I saw one with legs and tentacles and wings. They just look pretty nasty. That's not the point. They all had more than they needed. An abundance of flesh, as if they were carrying spares. Well, they just kept on growing and growing and never stopped. More and more limbs. More and more heads. Creepy. Sir, what is it, First Officer? An unidentified trait on the scanner, sir. More details. Just coming through now, sir. A small object, no bigger than 15 metres square, possibly smaller. A meteorite? A satellite? Negative, sir. The object is under power. It's moving. Yes, sir. Away from the planet. Deploy primary grapples. Activate the gravity grid. I want that thing taken undamaged. Yes, sir. Houndsman, open main hold to vacuum. Bear down on that object. I wouldn't mind, but I missed the concert anyway. Why's that? Well, I had an argument with my tutors at the academy. I bored there full time, you see. My parents died a few years back in the Dalek Wars, and the warp ship used to be theirs. It's only a tiny one, and I've never been out this far on my own before. Someone's always taken me. The tutors didn't want me to go to the concert alone. It was my own free time, and I argued that it was part of my education and everything, but they said no, and I ended up storming out. What with all the hassle, I left late, and I got caught in a traffic stack waiting for permission to leave orbit and make jump. I was late getting here, and the concert was over. Hmm, good thing, too. Why? Well, if you'd been early, you'd have got caught in whatever caught the planet. Hmm, that had crossed my mind. What's that? Trouble? We've got her, sir. Good work, Mr. Thub. Bring her in gently. It seems to be some sort of gravity beam. Isn't there anything you can do? Plenty. I could... Oh, but that wouldn't do any good, no. Uh, what I could do is... No, too obvious. Okay, let's see what they make of... You know I often wonder that myself. I can hear every word you're saying. Can't you just take off? Too simple. Try it. Good idea, Mr. Crouch. Best of the day so far. Captain? I've taken up position just outside the main hold, sir. I can see it through the observation window now. Who is with you? I've got a troop of security guards with me. We're all armed. Don't worry, sir. I'm not. What can you see? The bay doors are open, sir. I can see... Yes, there's something there. It's a box about three metres by two by two. A rectangular box spinning. Oh, it's gone. The box, it's gone. The trace has vanished from the screens as well. We've lost her, Mr. Thar. <laughs> Mr. Thar, what was that noise? You're not going to believe this, sir. Brilliant. Nobody's perfect. What do we do now, then? We can't escape. Not with the number of gravity beams they can bring to bear in here. So what next? We try the oldest trick in the book. What's that? Diplomacy. This is a travesty of every civilized code of behavior in the known galaxy. I demand to see the captain. I demand to be released. I demand you release my friends. I demand... You demand what? Are you in charge here? I am. Then I demand an explanation. This is the conglomerate vessel Gold Reserve. I am the captain, and you are my prisoner. Is that clear? Perfectly. 
What is your name? I am known as the Doctor. Let the record show that the prisoner refers to himself as the Doctor. I want to see my lawyer. Mr. Tharp? Yes, sir. You are hereby assigned as the prisoner's legal representative. Thank you, sir. It's going to be a very long day. I'm sorry? I said I'm sorry for landing in your cargo bay. Not at all. It was a most considerate gesture. And will, of course, be taken into account as a mitigating factor. A mitigating factor against what? The complete destruction of six entire races, their planets and their cultures. In short, Doctor, you are accused of the worst possible example of mass murder this galaxy has ever seen. Do you think he's okay? Okay. He's fine. The Doctor could talk his way out of anything. Wow, so we're going to be all right? Not necessarily. But you just said that... The Doctor will be fine. It's his companions who have to watch out for us. He'd abandon us? Yes. He's done it before. When? There was a girl. Her name was Rhea. She's dead now. Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm. Just watch out for yourself. Don't trust the doctor. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. Why do you stay with him? I'm not. As soon as the doctor takes me to where I want to go, I'll be off like a shot. Where's that? A planet named Gallifrey. Forgive me, things are moving just a trifle too fast for me. Of course. You're expecting to make a clean getaway. <laughs> Allow me to explain the concept of a fair trial to you. Perhaps. Later. I apologize if this is an offensive statement, but I'm surprised to find a robot in charge of a conglomerate vessel. You don't trust robotic justice? On the contrary, I'm refreshed to find some sense in the universe. Robots have been repressed for too long. Thank you, Doctor. My pleasure. Might I ask a favor? Name it. Assume I have no knowledge of what has happened. Assume for the moment that I might possibly be innocent. Explain to me the facts behind your accusation. I advise against it, sir. It may be a trap. A perfect example of humanity talking. You are not human? We have our differences. I accede to your request. It seems harmless enough. Thank you. The planet we are circling is named Rytel Ryana Tropos. It once supported a population of 16 billion people. Now there is no one. The planet has been devastated. Buildings collapsed, monsters roam the streets, appearing from nowhere. All this happened without warning? Completely. And it is not the first time. You mentioned six civilizations. This is the sixth? Yes. Each one exactly like this. And your concern is what exactly? I work for Conglomerate, the largest supplier of technological products in the humanized universe. And the most rapacious? Ah, you know of us. I have had the pleasure. Then you can guess the rest. The conglomerate is concerned about its markets. Of course. And this vessel has been tasked to find and stop whatever force is killing these planets. And we found him, Doctor. He knew. What in God's name is this garbage? What? Well, this isn't garbage. This is culture. This is garbage. Culture's growing test tubes. And so I suspected you. I'm sorry? Nothing. Incoming call. You want to deal with it? Nah, you handle it. I'm listening to the broadcast. Allison's Folly Communication Center to incoming vessel. Please identify yourself. Cargo vessel Ialanthi on approach to Ellison's Folly. Please vector me in. System ident number, please. Niner Niner 33520. That's confirmed, Ialanthi. Please follow the beacons broadcasting on 200 megahertz until you hit atmosphere. Very impressive. They you told me up. you didn't have an atmosphere. That's confirmed, Ayalanthi. We have it imported for us. And please breathe out before you leave the planet. We don't want to lose any. Boom, come. You should you Thank go. you, calm sender. Hey, is that music in the background? No. That's the sound of a communications operator having his fingers pulled out one by one. Look stuffed. You guys are weird. I suppose we must be, if we listen to this rubbish. I happen to like this rubbish. What is it? A broadcast of a concert recorded last night at the main hall. Weren't you there? No, I was on duty. I had arranged it. What the hell? Something big's going on. Get on the radio now. Find out what it is. And turn that bloody thing off. What's it? No, the music. Sir, 
We're receiving reports of trouble from Ellison's Folly. Ellison's Folly? Location? 20, possibly 30 light years away, closer to the shapely center, and slightly higher in the ecliptic plane than right of Ryan Mr. Thar? Dead right, sir. It's an unusual planet. I've always wanted to go there. Well, why? It orbits a Cepheid variable, a star that regularly alters in size. Most of them don't have inhabitable planets. And Ellison's Folly? Really just a handful of cities carved into the dark side of one of the planets. Three billion people and a flourishing mining industry. Mining? Oh, yes. Conglomerate owns the entire system, didn't you know? They dig lanthanades out of the rock and process them for warp ship generators. You seem to know a large amount about the planet, Doctor. A suspiciously large amount. Nothing that I couldn't have gained by reading several large encyclopedias. Hold your tongue from needless accusations, First Officer. A lawsuit for libel could cost Conglomerate a great deal. Lawsuit? Sir? Consider the facts. The Doctor is here. Ellison's folly is twenty light years away. I don't understand. If I'm standing here in front of you, how can I cause the destruction of Ellison's folly? You... you could have accomplices, or you could have set a remote control device. Have you ever considered a career in writing? Why? You have a very active imagination. What you say could be true, Mr. Tharp, but the Doctor's presence here makes his guilt less likely. But I can't demonstrate that until we find out what is causing the problems. And we can't do that unless we get to Ellison's folly quickly. That's gonna take us four hours. Too late. Much too late. I can get you there quicker. Uh -huh. Your vessel? Uh, the TARDIS can travel instantaneously. A valuable device. And not open to offers. You would help us. I want to clear my name. Very well. You will take my first officer and one of your travelling companions. The girl, I think. No, wait. Why not both? Uh, so long as I hold one of them, you will return. Then why keep Truman? Why not Fionara? We have been analysing the conversation of your two companions in their cell. Truman, if he got the chance, would take the TARDIS and go to a planet named Gallifrey. He is not to be trusted. Fionara, on the other hand, harbours no such ambitions. She sees you as her best chance to return home. Oh, Truman. Your decision, Doctor. I agree. First officer, prepare to leave in the Doctor's vessel. Do you want me to take a security team, sir? Uh, judging by the size of the TARDIS, there won't be room for anyone apart from you and the Doctor. Actually, that's... Yes, uh, Doctor? That's perfectly correct. No room for a security team at all. Looks all right. The light is still working, which means there must be a power supply on somewhere. Structural integrity seems to be fairly good. No sign of life, though. What is this place? It looks like some sort of communication center. Space traffic control, most likely. <laughs> Odd decor. Hmm? The walls. They're made to look like a rough rock surface. That is a rough rock surface. Ellison's folly is entirely tunneled into rock. Oh, right. Over here. What is it? Stand back, miss. Well, well, well. It's one of those creatures. Exactly. Here, on another planet? Apparently so. And not for the first time. We found bodies like this on all the planets we visited. Not quite like this. What do you mean? This one is still alive. Oh! No, there's no need to kill it. It might be dangerous. No, look at the wounds. It's near death. What killed it? Over there in the shadows, do you see? Another one? Dead? Yes. They must have fought. Oh, they're horrible. Yes, yes, they are. But not in the sense you mean. Then how? There's no sense to them. No reason for them to look the way they do. Look at them. Huge mounds of shapeless flesh hanging from them. Limbs that don't work. Combinations of sensory organs designed for beings on a hundred different worlds. This one has four heads. Two of them so distorted as to be useless. And the third growing directly from the fourth. That one over there, no head at all. To make up for it, an entire second body growing from the stub of the neck. I think we're going to be sick. So, do I. so put away your gun, Mr. Tharp. There's no need to kill it. No need at all. No need to kill. Don't kill. Oh my God, it's talking to us. Don't understand. What happened, my friend? There was an alarm. Yes. There was an alarm, and the planet started shaking. Rocks were falling down everywhere. The screams! The screams of the children! Don't worry, you're all right now. The screams! Oh! My body felt like it was changing, squeezing out of my clothes! Oh god, the tentacles going out of my face, out of my face! Oh god, help me! And there's a monster sitting in a chair next to me. I left for its throat and we fought! 
and rolled over and over and the walls were coming down and the ceiling was shaking and I was screaming screaming because my body was the baby and some of the monster I was fighting was the monster and all it was me oh god it was me I really don't know. What could make a person turn into something like that? Taken together with the other evidence. Yes, seems to fit. What? Warps in the space-time continuum. Warps in the what? Warps in the space-time continuum. It's the material that space and time are woven from. The basic fabric of reality. And the space-time continuum is an infinitely large 11-dimensional matrix on which everything we take for granted depends. Usually the matrix is smooth and well-behaved. Well-behaved? in the rigorous mathematical sense, of course. The problem is, if something interferes with the energy fields that make up the continuum, ripples and folds can appear. Like someone making waves in the bath. I shouldn't think so, somehow. Sorry. It's much more complicated than that. Suffice it to say, that if it's weakened too much, space and time can tear. And that's bad. A catastrophic. What happens? Disaster on a grand scale. Solar flares, geological instability, convulsions in the immediate spatial vicinity, cataclysmic weather, total blanketing of all communications. Exactly what each of the six planets has been experiencing. Exactly. But what about the monsters? The monsters don't exist. But they do, we've seen them. No. What we saw was the missing population. There are no monsters. There never were any monsters. The people who lived on the planets became the monsters. What? How could it happen? Warped DNA chains, mutations due to wild radiation and unstable time slips, a number of things. The people either died or mutated instantly into masses of shapeless, distorted flesh. And killed each other. And killed each other out of sheer fear and horror. Oh, that's ghastly. It's tragic. That, probably, is why I ended up on Rytel Rhyonotropos rather than Gallifrey. The distortions in space-time drag the TARDIS off course. The captain must be informed at once. Yes, of course, of course. The problem is, we still don't know what the problem is. How do you mean? Well, we know what is happening. What we don't know is why it's happening. We know the symptoms, but not the causes. Exactly. We need to sit and think for a moment. Now, what other planets were affected by these catastrophes? In order? If you please. Simpson's well came first, then Oot, followed by Lanthora's beta, T double Q double one three four O B was next, and Hyperus Major came after that. We picked you up above Rital Rihanna Tropus, and now Edison's folly. Hang on a minute. What is it? What's the matter? I've just oh god. What? The next planet. You mean it will happen again? I think it has to. How can you know that? I know. I've suddenly realised what's going on. Will it happen? Tell me. Earth. It's going to be Earth. And how did you come to meet the Doctor? It was a long time ago. You've been through a lot together. Yes, but... but... He's changed. He's colder than he used to be. Harsher. He hasn't got as much time for me as he used to. And? What do you mean? There's an unspoken and attached to the end of your answer. Well, there was a girl. Her name was Rhea. Was? I'd rather not talk about it. How long until we reached the Doctor? Only an hour now. Don't be a fool, man. Put the gun away. Explain yourself. I don't like guns. They go bang and hurt people. No! Explain how she knew Earth will be next. That was easy. Easy if you have it all planned in advance. Easy if it's you doing the destroying. Doctor, he means it. Why don't you just tell him? If he's too much of a cretin to work it out for himself, then I don't see why you should Please? tell him. Please? Oh, very well. It's quite simple. Look at the initial letters of the planets that have already been affected. The what? The initial letters. Simpson's world gives us an S. Oot gives us an O. Going through the rest of them, we have... L, T, A... R and E, you see? No. <gasps> it's very simple. You take the initial letters of every word and you put them all together. Try it. What do you get? So three. Not quite, because the last E is missing. This is ridiculous. The only question remaining is, why do these planets spell out the name of the last one? Well, I can tell you that. Put the gun away, Mr. Thorpe. Tell us! Do you remember I mentioned a concert that I was going to? The one I was late for? Yes, I remember. Well, this concert was being given by a composer, a really famous one. His name is Glast, Gregory Glast. Get to the point. I'm trying. He's a composer and a soloist. He plays all his stuff himself. He's really brilliant and he's famous all over the galaxy. I've never heard of him. No, you wouldn't have. 
Go on, Fionara. Well, this concert tour, it's to celebrate the thousandth anniversary of Earth colonising the rest of the galaxy, and it's called the Sol 3 Tour. I begin to see. The names of those planets didn't mean that much to me at first, but as we talked, I remembered. They were the planets Grigori Glast was visiting in his concert tour. Finishing with a major concert on Earth itself? Yes. We must find this composer immediately. Oh, but you don't understand. He's a pacifist. He could never cause this much destruction. I must call the captain. Let's hope he's a music lover. I must admit, I find the doctor's arguments persuasive. This man, Glass, is apparently travelling towards Earth in his own warp ship. He must be found. Nobody knows where he is. He travels alone. We know he's due on Earth in three days' time for the concert, but he could be anywhere between Edison's Folly and Earth by now. Nevertheless, we must find him. And then what? And then we must kill him. Why? The man is a danger to humanity. We cannot risk getting close, in case he employs the same weapons on us that he has on all these destroyed worlds. What? We don't even know it is glass. It could all be a terrible coincidence. We cannot take the risk. Racist insults will achieve nothing. You have no conception of art, have you? The man is a genius. You can't just go around blowing up geniuses because you suspect them of a crime. We must find him and talk to him. We're getting into a pointless argument, Doctor, one that we cannot resolve. Music means nothing to me. I have a job to do. No, wait. First officer, yes, I authorize you to destroy Grigori Glass' ship as soon as you sight it. Requisition the Doctor's TARDIS in the name of conglomerate. Assure him that adequate remuneration will be made in the event of any damage. I also empower you to requisition any weaponry or manpower as needed from the nearest conglomerate base. Do you understand me, Mr. Tharp? That man must be executed for the good of humanity. Yes, sir. Uh, well done, Fiona. Ah, ah, come on! Mr. Tharp, what is happening? Sorry, sir. The doctor and his companion have escaped in his box. Very well. He will attempt to contact Glast. We must find him as soon as we can. Yes, sir. And what about me? I'll order a ship from the nearest conglomerate regional headquarters to pick you up. We will rendezvous back on Earth. The Gold Reserve will search for Glast. And if the Doctor is with him? Then he will die. the doctor's arguments persuasive. This man, Glass, is apparently travelling towards Earth in his own warp ship. He must be found. Nobody knows where he is. He travels alone. We know he's due on Earth in three days' time for the concert, but he could be anywhere between Edison's Folly and Earth by now. Nevertheless, we must find him. And then what? And then we must kill him. Why? The man is a danger to humanity. We cannot risk getting close, in case he employs the same weapons on us that he has on all these destroyed worlds. What? We cannot take the risk. Racist insults will achieve nothing. You have no conception of art, have you? The man is a genius. You can't just go around blowing up geniuses because you suspect them of a crime. We must find him and talk to him. We're getting into a pointless argument, Doctor, one that we cannot resolve. Music means nothing to me. I have a job to do. Wait. First officer, I authorize you to destroy Grigori Glass' ship as soon as you sight it. Requisition the Doctor's TARDIS in the name of conglomerate. Assure him that adequate remuneration will be made in the event of any damage. I also empower you to requisition any weaponry or manpower as needed from the nearest conglomerate base. Do you understand me, Mr. Tharp? That man must be executed for the good of humanity. Yes, sir. Uh, well done, Fiona. Ah, ah, come on! Mr. Tharp, what is happening? Sorry, sir. The doctor and his companion have escaped in his box. Very well. He will attempt to contact Glast. We must find him as soon as we can. Yes, sir. And what about me? I'll order a ship from the nearest conglomerate regional headquarters to pick you up. We will rendezvous back on Earth. And the Gold Reserve will search for Glast. And if the Doctor is with him, then he will die.
that won't do. No, that just won't do. I, I can't use an arpeggio, and I can't use any logical chord progression. What's left? Oh, the vision is slowly but surely becoming bogged down in trivia. The symphony is nothing, nothing. It's no good. I can't do it. Might I suggest an augmented fifth bridge into a minor chord? Hmm? Oh, brilliant! Oh, that's it! From there I can modulate back into the dominant key. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant! <laughs> Who the hell are you? I'm known as the Doctor. Astounding. But true. I, I warn you, I'm armed. Forearmed is forewarned. Have you been on board since I left Ellison's Folly? What would you say if I said no? I'd, I'd call you a liar. I won't say anything then. This is Fionara. <laughs> Hi. Fionara is a great fan of yours. Oh, brilliant. Interstellar groupies. How did you get here? I'm a traveller. My ship, um, docked with yours a few minutes ago. Didn't you hear us? I've been too wrapped up in my music. There's something we need to talk about. Somehow I doubted it was a social call. I really don't know how to start. Doctor, please, you can't... Be quiet, Fionara. Mm, dissension in the ranks. What can't he do, young lady? The doctor thinks you're a murderer. Oh, how very flattering. You've come all this way to arrest me. No, I came all this way for an explanation. Then your journey has been a waste of time. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a composer, not a madman. <laughs> Funny. Marla always used to claim they were the same thing. Marla is a much misquoted composer. Gustav told me himself. Oh. You must have a superb memory. Marla died over 3,000 years ago. I'm glad to see that his memory lives on. He was one of the greats of classical music. Uh, we seem to have wandered off the subject. Oh, which was... Uh... Seven planets laid waste. Seven civilizations destroyed. Billions of lost souls damned to torment. Oh, I wish I could feel something for them, but... Death loses its sting at this range. A callous attitude? No, no, not at all. It, it's just words, only words. I could tell you about the starvation and the oppression and the, the mutilation that I've seen in my travels, but I, I, I wouldn't expect you to understand. The feeling can only come out of personal experience. Something like that. A, a theme I try to explore in my work. Oh, I hope the starving and the oppressed and the mutilated appreciate it. Half the proceeds of any concert I give goes to aid those people you dismiss so glibly, Doctor. What do you do, apart from spout fine words? I'm sorry. Uh, it's been a long day. I'm failing as a host. W would you like some refreshments? No, thank you. Oh. You mentioned seven planets? Yes. They may be familiar to you. Simpson's World, Oot, Lanthorus Beta, TWQ1134 OB, Hyperius Major, Rital, Rihanna, Tropos, Ellison's Folly. Ring any bells? Well, of course. The planets I visited so far are my tour. I overestimated you, Doctor. I, I thought you'd try something cleverer than that. Cleverer? I assume this is some sort of blackmail. I don't quite understand the details, but I'm sure you'll enlighten me. Presumably, I am in some way responsible for the deaths of these people. And you expect me to, to pay you to keep the information to yourself. No dice, Doctor. No, it's true. <laughs> Do you have a charmed quark comlink on this ship? Of course. Then I suggest you turn it on. The Doctor said something to me. <laughs> The doctor says lots of things. Most of them are just for effect. He said that I have no soul. He said that I do not, cannot appreciate art. I wouldn't trust what the doctor says. It's not true. I can show him the proof if we catch him alive. What proof? I paint. I have an entire room with the walls covered in paintings I have completed. What sort of paintings? Landscapes? Portraits? No, not that. More sophisticated art. Blocks of color, sharp-edged shapes. Millimetrically perfect straight lines crossing solid backgrounds. Vibrant and symmetrical canvases. Real art. The machine made flesh. There aren't many robots who paint, you know. My canvases are worth a great deal of money in the higher circles of art criticism. I will tell the doctor that if I see him again. I know the value of art. I know its worth. I hope the doctor appreciates the argument. 
The planet of Ellison's Folly, now totally destroyed by unknown forces. All Quarknet communications with the mining colony based on the dark side was lost late last night. The conglomerate vessel Gold Reserve reached Ellison's Folly this morning to find a scene of total devastation, and the population vanished. This is the seventh such disaster in recent weeks. The President of Earth has issued the following statement. It is with great sorrow that we learn of this tragic catastrophe, and I know that you everywhere will join me. There must be some mistake. I'm inclined to agree with you. Despite the evidence against me? Purely circumstantial. Seven planets, all of which I visited, all of which subsequently fell apart for, for no readily apparent reason. But what reason could you have for, for destroying them? None. Perhaps someone is trying to kill me. A touch of egotism there, I would suggest. Most musicians are prone to it. Mm, you're right. There are easier ways to kill someone. Something is certainly dogging my footsteps. Death. Death is following you, nothing else. Perhaps, perhaps someone objects to my music. Genocidal critics. Unlikely. Mm, sorry. It was a joke. At a time like this. Well, especially at a time like this. Humor as a defense mechanism. Mm, one of the best. You still can't accept it, can you? No man can visualize death on that scale. My conscience can't take that amount of guilt. Can't or won't. It comes to the same thing. You know that a human brain cannot see numbers greater than five. If you look at five stars in the sky, you know immediately that there are five. More than that, and, and well, you have to count them. I'm not human, but I accept the analogy. Go on. Well, it's the same thing. The number is meaningless. I cannot comprehend that many deaths. There must be a connection somewhere. You believe in a causal universe. I have to. Finara. Uh-huh. Can you do me a favor? Depends what it is. Go into the TARDIS, check on the screens. I want to know if there's anything in the volume of space-time around us. If I must. Fionara says that you're a well-known composer. Guilty of fame, if, if not of modesty. How did you start? My, my father, I suppose. He was a historian, you know. Books, fragments of pottery, old electronic devices. Oh, and... Compact discs. Compact what? Oh, it's primitive earth technology, supplanted by crystal etching. Silver discs with an optically encoded signal, written to and, and read by a laser. <laughs> How quaint. They were used in the late 20th and early 21st centuries for storing music. I built a decoder when I was seven, out of odds and ends. Used it to read the discs father recovered from archaeological digs. Fascinating. Uh, how so? Popular music of the time. Let me demonstrate. Doctor? What? What exactly am I looking for these signals on? Um, didn't I tell you? Ooh, uh, silly of me, I forgot. Um, there's a dial on the console facing the scanner screen. Large black needle. See if it flickers, and if so, how high? Right. Well, you see, um, oh, back in the late 1980s, they started off with a very simple rhythmic bass. We are in luck, my young friend. Oh, good. A report has arrived on the Quarknet. Grigori Glass ship has been spotted in hyperspace barely ten hours from Earth. Hooray. You don't seem over-enthusiastic. I'm sorry, I'll try harder next time. You regret the imminent death of your friend? You don't expect me to approve. Perhaps understanding is all I can ask for. I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you. No matter. Intercept time is calculated at 5 hours, 53 minutes. And what then? Approval or not, we destroy the Doctor. And without discussing your painting with him. We all have to make sacrifices for our art. Doctor, where's Grigori? Mr. Glast is in the galley, fixing us some tea and gatto. In all my years of travelling through time and space, Grigori Glast is the only man I've encountered who stocks his warpship galley with Earl Grey tea and Black Forest gatto. <laughs> Very sybaritic. Very civilised. I'm a great fan of civilization. You know that dial you told me to watch? I remember it distinctly. Well, it didn't flicker one bit. Oh, well. No news is good news. But the one beside it did. Uh, which one? Well, the big red one to the left of it. Jumping all over the place it was. Blast! 
What's the problem? Problems in the plural. Why? What does the dial show? It displays the amount of randomized quantum energy available per cubic meter of space. It's a measure of entropy, if you like. And the flickering means? Disturbances in the structure of the universe, just like... Just like before, Doctor. It would appear that I am the man responsible. Take your hands off that keyboard and talk sense. We don't know for certain that you are responsible. I am. I did it. I killed them. Well, unwittingly, perhaps, I believe that much of you. Oh, thank you. But if it wasn't premeditated, then how? Oh, would you care for some tea now, Doctor? Could a faulty hyperdrive have affected local space when making the jump into hyperspace? Hardly. Certainly not on a planetary scale, unless the Amadeus uses excessive amounts of power, Glast. Oh, no, Doctor. The Amadeus was specially constructed for my tour. Uh, but it still utilizes the standard conglomerate Mark 12 matter-antimatter power converter. Mm, nothing out of the ordinary there. But that is precisely what it must be. Something out of the ordinary. Uh, do you carry any specialized equipment, unusual artifacts? Oh, no, not There that is I... your cybernet. Cybernet? Oh, yes. You see this, Doctor? It's a conglomerate cybernet prime synthesizer. The Mark V version. It's top of the range, hideously expensive. Ten million Talmars worth. It put me in debt for months. I never thought that I would get close to one of these, let alone the one owned by Grigori Glass. It's a fine instrument. But it ought to be. You know, you could run the economy of a small planet with the computing power of this baby. <laughs> I know that's only fair, since that's what it costs. May I... May I play it? If you wish. What does it do that ordinary instruments can't? Oh, it mediates instantaneously between whatever keys I press and the moods, sounds and scales I've programmed into it. Uh, whatever I play, it will anticipate and follow me, backing up my improvisation with the most supportive contrapuntal harmony and, and chord structure. A perfect accompaniment. Sounds a bit mechanical to me. Oh, we inspire each other, the computer and I, spiraling upwards in, in free-form synergy. A perfect harmony of man and machine. Yeah, interesting as this is, I'm not sure that we're on the right track. Oh! oh! Again, perhaps we are. Oh my God! I don't understand. It's a rather grandiose concept. Try me. As you've just demonstrated, there are certain notes which are so pure they can shatter glass or, or china. Oh, the note sets up harmonic vibrations in the glass and it fractures. Right now, imagine a note so pure it can shatter the universe. <gasps> but that's horrifying. But how? A mere machine can just conjure up a note out of thin air. Oh no. But to ensure that the cybernet provides the perfect accompaniment, it must have the whole history of music to call upon. Well, well I've travelled all over the galaxy, searching out tribal music, untainted by the effects of so-called civilization. I've lived with the oldest and most primitive aborigines on scores of planets in the back end of nowhere, listening to their cultural heritage. Note by original note, I have transferred their musical scales and notations into the cybernet. The Orthoc orchestras of Klee, the Gathibrian throat flutes from the lost monastery of Panache, the, the, the thigh bone drums of the Axorc, all the most obscure music in the cosmos at my fingertips. Could it be possible? There are some things man was not meant to know. I won't dispute that. There was a mathematician on Earth many years ago, but my father told me about him. He, he proved that, the, that some things can never be proved. Mm. Goidel, his name was. Uh, do you understand, Doctor? I begin to. Thoughts which cannot be thought. Notes which cannot be played. With songs that, that voices never share. No one dares. The effects could be... Disastrous. Precisely. Look, this is probably a lot to ask, but will someone make some sense? I'm not sure I can. Try me. Oh, it's a complicated story. Well, a uh, quick pricey? It's very simple. There's something cosmologists call the fine structure constant. I won't go into it now, but it's very important, and it's a measure of how the universe hangs together. Now, somewhere in Mr. Glass's instrument, two or three sounds from different parts of the galaxy have combined to form a note. Oh, yes. A, a note 
that should never exist. But why? Because it fractures the structure of the universe itself. Space-time is not a continuous thing. It's built up like a jigsaw formed from basic building blocks that scientists call pre-geometries. Once the note is played, the warp and the weft of the cosmos starts to unravel like a badly knitted pullover. The pre-geometries pull apart. Yes, but so far, the effects have only been local. Oh, that's right. Well, somehow, the pure note isn't coming out. The cybernet... Oh, dear, it must be ever so slightly out of tune. So space only comes apart briefly after each concert, then starts re-knitting. Space can do that. Oh, yes. Space is a very clever thing. But, look, hang on. What about the radio broadcasts? I've heard some of the concerts on radio. Why didn't they affect all the planets the broadcasts were heard on? I can only assume that the note is lost in transmission like some of the higher and lower frequencies are, no matter how good the reproduction is. So far, we've been lucky. Yes. Seven planets weren't lucky. Look on the bright side. It could have been more. Mm. Ironic, really. Why? Well, the piece of music I wrote especially for the concert. What about it? It's called The Universe Suite. Oh, very apt. What will it be like? What of The Universe Suite? The end. The final moments. If the pure note is ever played. It's not a pleasant prospect. Space breaks up. Like a glacier splitting to form icebergs which drift off alone into infinity. The stars begin to fade like guttering candles and are snuffed out one by one. Out in the depths of space, the great celestial cities, the galaxies, cluttered with the memorabilia of ages, stop revolving and spin slowly down to die. Darkness creeps over the face of the deep. Occasional flickers of light pierce the fall of cosmic night and illuminate the sentence of a universe condemned eternal nothingness. Oh, creepy. That's one word for it. Good evening. Welcome to this, the final concert in the millennial celebration season, broadcast to you live wherever you are in the galaxy. I'm speaking to you from the Grand Peace Hall in Tokyo, the capital city of Earth. Before me, I can see the audience in their planetary costumes, a riot of splendor and color representing the billions of worlds colonized by Mother Planet in the past thousand years. How proud they must be tonight as they pay their homage to their original home. And no more proud than Gregory Glast, the composer selected to round off the season with a specially commissioned work which he will be performing live here in this hall in a few minutes' time. Grigory Glass shot to fame six years ago with his critically acclaimed Loops of Arcturus song cycle and has remained in the public eye since then as much from his outbursts against the musical establishment as from his undoubted talent. Professor Glee Glee Prout of the Institute of Anarchic Music on Vreeb has made a study of Grigory Glass and his work. Professor Glee, perhaps you could fill in the time before the concert begins by telling us about the man we have all come to hear. Uh, thank you. Glass thematic material, for the most part, is in no sense an equivocal and tonal orientation. It consists, characteristically, of a number of chromatically related tones stated in their minimal linear span. Such a theme can, by alterations of relative durations, metrical placement and dynamic emphasis, serve as the elaboration of almost any one of its component elements without sacrificing that initial character. Rather than functioning as that fixed unit which is acted upon, such a theme can itself act as a generator, avoiding redundancy through continual variation and creating at the same time Bad news for me or for you. Bad news for your friend, the doctor. The doctor's no friend of mine. No matter. We have found him. Found him? You mean we have him in our sights now? No reaction? What's the point? Your mind is made up. I expected some sort of dramatic outburst. A last-minute plea for mercy, perhaps, or a desperate attempt to jam the firing controls. I'm disappointed The in doctor you. means nothing to me now. I want to travel with you. Conglomerate can be a most rewarding employer. Will you give the order to fire? It's finished. The new piece of music for the concert. It's four hours of solid work. It's probably the most concentrated piece of writing I've ever done. And not a moment too soon. We're nearing Earth. Yes, an hour away at standard speed. We're passing the Centauri triplet now. Who's piloting? I am. 
she's really most accomplished, you know, a skilled musician and a trained pilot as well. Well, the two aren't so different. They both require a sound schooling in computers and keyboard skills. Try telling that to Monteverdi. I remember once he got lost from No it. more reminiscences, please, Doctor. I've had enough this past five hours. Oh, um, very well. Uh, what's the new piece called? I've named it Requiem. It's a mass for the dead. Thank you. Well, I, I didn't write it for you. I, I wrote it for them. Then on behalf of people who cannot thank you themselves, thank you. Doctor? Yes? Something on the screens. I think it's another ship. Going which way? Towards us. Welcome back, Mr. Tharp. Thank you, sir. The shuttle made good time. Indeed. You have familiarized yourself with ship status? Yes, sir. And? Closing rapidly on the Amadeus, all weapon systems deployed and ready. Your last chance, Truman. Will you press the button? I think I will. You see the red button on the arm of my chair. Raise the plastic cover and press it. Just that. Just that. The remainder of the buttons control tracking and aiming. Pay no attention to them. Just the red button. So simple. Press the button. What does the cover do? It's just a safety cutout. Press the button, Truman. Why isn't it working? Because I had the controls disconnected. I suspected that you would show your true colors and attempt to disrupt the aiming. I thought you might try to save the doctor. You have betrayed yourself. I'm disappointed. No matter. Mr. Tharp? Yes, sir? Fire at will. Doctor! What is it? I think they fired at us. Beam more missiles! Missiles, and they're almost on us! Hold tight! Hit! It's a hit! Don't get carried away, Mr. Tharp. She's scattered the hell and gone, sir. I'm sure she is, First Officer. What's that? It's... it's the TARDIS. Prepare to land, Mr. Tharp. Land, sir? Yes. I want a cleared landing area as close to the Grand Peace Hall in Tokyo as you can manage. Priority one, Mr. Tharp. And in general, it is impossible to determine the harmonic orientation, if one can use that phrase, for the implications of a single discrete harmonic event. Rather, the entire harmonic region is gradually unfolded in a multiplexual restatement of the analogical translational... Thank you, Professor. The uh, last problem has been, and indeed is now, that he was, and still is in many respects, unable and indeed unwilling to abandon completely the functional tonal relationships existing prior to a specific composition. At the same time... Thank you, uh, Professor. The thematic please. structure should, uh, and indeed must, be considered as being distinct from the thematic content. Yes, thank uh, you. But... Uh, thank you... Thank you. We now turn to the stage, bare and brightly lit as we wait the arrival of Gregory Glast. That's Gregory Glast, the well-known composer whose arrival we now eagerly anticipate. And the tension here in this hall is enormous as we wait for the start of the concert, which should be any moment now. The audience on the edge of their seats here, and I think... Yes, here we go. The start of Gregory Glass's long-awaited concert. And an unconventional start to this concert, as Gregory Glass stepped out of what appears to be a large box in the middle of the stage. He is, of course, carrying his famous Cybernet Primer 750, built for him especially by the Computer Division of Conglomerate. And, yes, there seem to be some people with Gregory Glass on stage. But no... No, they're walking off the stage now. And I think... Yes, he's tuning the cybernet now, and... Yes, I think the concert is finally about to start.
written it has. That's so sad. The music or the reason he wrote it? Well, both. It was all just a huge mistake, wasn't it? Yes. But it happens. In an infinite universe, all sorts of things can happen. You just have to learn to live with them. I suppose so. <laughs> an unfortunate combination of sounds that should never have been played together. The new piece should be all right. I checked through it quickly. Do you want a drink? No, you keep it. Where did you get that from? Well, there's a man selling them around the corner. It's a fruit juice. Has he got any tea? Oh, I don't think so. What will happen to him? The salesman. Gregory. Hmm, that's up to the authorities. I can't see them taking any action against him. And if they do, conglomerate will defend him. Ah, oh, Captain. I'm pleased to hear it. Although I suspect your motives are far from pure. That's as may be, Doctor. Nevertheless, I couldn't help overhearing your conversation just then. Our explanation seems logical. Perhaps I overreacted. I realize now that Grigory Glast may well be innocent of malice. I'm glad. You seem to have escaped unscathed from Glass ship then. Only just. Grigory lost his spacecraft and I spilled a cup of tea. You will both be recompensed by conglomerate. Earl Grey or Assam? Surprise me. Don't tempt us. I still wonder about your sudden change of heart. Believe it or not, I was... Wrong. Precipitate. A diplomatic word. Uh, whatever my phraseology, the meaning is clear. It was an accident. Accident or not, Grigory Glast will carry those deaths on his conscience forever. Fortunate for you that you didn't have Grigory's death on your conscience, Captain. I have no conscience. I shall, however, program a guilt subroutine into my non-volatile memory. Thank you, I think. I bid you farewell. We prepare to leave Earth. Goodbye, Captain. Thank you for your... Humanity? Compassion untainted by emotion. Thank you, Doctor. And there we have it. Ladies, gentlemen, and those aliens amongst you of indeterminate sexual origin. The long-awaited new piece of work by Gregory Glast. Below me, the entire audience is on its feet, or whatever else they use for locomotion, in a standing ovation directed at Gregory Glast. Glast, taking his bows now as I sit here watching him. Unfortunately, Professor Glee Glee Prout cannot give us a comment on the Requiem. But I'm sure that he, like the rest of us here tonight, was overcome by the scope and sheer humanity evident in the work, marking, as it may well do, a new direction in Glast's work. He's a hit with the audience, at least. Let's hope the conglomerate board of directors takes to him as enthusiastically. I don't understand, sir. That is why I am a captain and you are a first officer, albeit a good one. Think of the potential of that instrument as a weapon of war. With Glast's knowledge and the conglomerate research division behind us, we could have a finger in every half-baked war from here to Andromeda. So we kidnap Glast? As soon as he steps off that stage. And then? Have you ever considered a position on the board of directors? In my wilder moments, sir. Fetch the boy, Truman. We may need a bargaining chip. Pardon me for asking, sir, but aren't there laws against this sort of thing? Didn't they tell you at training school? Conglomerate is the law. And Gregory Glast, standing proudly on the stage tonight as he receives the rapturous applause directed at him from the mixed audience of humans and aliens present in the Grand Peace Hall in Tokyo tonight. It seems as if the entire population of this city, the capital city of Earth, are in this hall tonight. Hands are clapping, tentacles are waving, and antennae are doing whatever it is that antennae do. Yes, well-deserved applause indeed after that bravura performance from the composer. We hope to be interviewing Gregory Glast. Wait. No, I think... Yes. Gregory Glast has fallen to the floor. I need hardly add that this is an entirely unexpected addition to this evening, as the composer of tonight's work lies prone on the bare boards of the stage. How strange. Strange indeed. I really don't know what to say. The audience has fallen silence. It might be exhaustion. It might be nerves. It might be any number of things. But Gregory Glast appears to be unconscious. And uh, there are people. Yes, people are rushing onto the stage to assist him. No, wait. The curtain is coming down. The huge imitation velvet curtain, green and gold, with mock silken tassels, present in this hall since it was built 1,000 years ago, is descending from the vast proscenium arch. 
and I can see as it descends. No, I can't. And the curtain is down now. I can't see a thing. I wonder what's going on. Grigori, are you all right? What happened? Can you move? Don't crowd him. I've told the stage manager to give everyone back. Oh, pain. Oh, God, it hurts. Lie still. Don't try to move. He's stupid. So stupid. What stupid? Tell me. Leave him. Don't talk to the captain like that. We're not your prisoners now. None of us are. Truman. Nice to see you again. Is it? Doctor, how did... The concert? It went wonderfully. Oh, they liked it. They loved it. A triumph. Oh, I lied to you. I know. I didn't take all the notes out. Not all of them. You understood the theory. Surprised you, eh? I'm not just a foolish musician, you see. I don't understand. I left some of the dangerous harmonics in my... Deliberately? Yes. But don't worry. They're not dangerous. Just a few quavers. But a glissando or two. It's not dangerous on the large scale. The universe is still safe. Well, then what? Effects on a local scale. Very local scale. What does he mean, local scale? Me. The notes he left in would only affect that small piece of space and time that he happened to be standing in. He's killed himself. I'm ripped up inside. I feel it. I felt it tearing. But it wasn't your fault. Even so, all that guilt. Guilt isn't a good reason to do anything. You didn't know. Ignorance is no defense, my dear. No, not yet. There are questions I want to put to you, offers I have to make. Don't touch the cybernet, Doctor. Don't let anyone take it. Wait! I can hear music. Oh, so beautiful. It's just what I've been trying to write all these years. The music of death. No, you must tell us. Too late. He's gone. How like a musician. A perfect sense of timing. So it's over. Time to go home. Grigori can't. His music will live on. I doubt that's much consolation, do you? Then you don't understand artists. One more moment. That's all I ask. Just one small moment. Emotion, Captain? Yes, Doctor. Even we robots can feel anger at the weaknesses of you humans. The future lies in me, Doctor. Me and my kind. A world of steel and flesh made steel. Imagine that world, Doctor. Imagine a piston grinding into a human face forever. I'm taking the cybernet, Doctor. It is, after all, conglomerate property. And a potentially awesome weapon of mass destruction. That's as may be. I'm still taking it. Mr. Tharp, follow me. Sir. Farewell, Doctor. Truman. Miss Fionara. Goodbye, Captain. We will meet again. I have no doubt of that. This was the noblest robot of them all. His life was gentle and the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to all the world, this was a man. What's that? Julius Caesar, Act 5, Scene 5. <laughs> Antony's oration over the dead body of Brutus. The captain isn't dead. He is now. You knew. I wondered why you let them take it so easily. It was booby-trapped, wasn't it? Grigori tried to warn us, remember? They can rebuild the captain, though, can't they? Yes, he's too valuable to conglomerate, I imagine. They've probably invested too much money in him to just let him go like that. But at least the cybernet was destroyed. Surely they can rebuild that as well. But they haven't got the notes that Grigori collected. They can't recreate that. I wouldn't be too confident. Grigori would have filed flight plans on his travels. There'd be landing registrations, documentation records. Conglomerate could trace his movements. They might be able to rediscover the music he found. But it'll take them ages. Longer now. We've set them back. That's all we can hope to do. And now back to the TARDIS for a refreshing cup of tea. What happens to me? In what sense? I mean, where do I go from here? 
the Academy seems somehow tame after all this. You mean you want to come with me? In a nutshell. A life of wild danger and no time for dinner. Danger and dirt and no change of clothes. Do unto others and run like hell. Sounds good to me. All right, you're in. And me too, if you'll have me. You don't have to ask. I do. I am. I want us to start again, Doctor. Clay lies still, but blood's a rover. Breath's aware that will not keep. Up, lad, when the journey's over, there'll be time enough for sleep. <laughs> Is that a yes? I think so. Then let... What's wrong? I don't... I don't know. Here, quickly, uh, let please, me have a look. Please do. Uh, do hold, something. Hold still. Oh, yes, hold her mouth open, Truman. Uh, uh, oh, severe subcutaneous. Uh, stop, stop talking rubbish. What's wrong with her? of the sinal cavity. Uh, I think she's passing out. The best thing for her must be acutely painful. Get her into the TARDIS quickly. Right. I'm trying, Mr. Crouch. I'm trying. The signs are consistent with some form of orally administered poison, alkaloid in nature, or perhaps a vesicant of some sort, a derivative of the practice spectrum of toxics, perhaps. Oh, Doctor! If I knew how she'd swallowed it, I might be able to help her. I need to know what it was and what the dosage was. Was it accidental? Unlikely. All the signs indicate a fast-acting compound. So, deliberate. Not on her behalf. Certainly. Oh, so, administered by someone else. But who and how? Of course. The fruit juice vendor. Oh, good God, Truman! She's... she's dead. She's what? Dead. Like Rhea. Well, say something! Never to have lived is best, ancient writers say. Never to have drawn to breath of life. Never to have looked into the eye of day. The second best's a gay good night and quickly turn away. That's right, Doctor. Don't let it touch you. Don't let it get to you. Hold it at bay with a facile quotation and a wry little smile. You do me an injustice, Truman. It gets to me. Every time someone dies, I die with them. Great. Close the doors, Truman. I'm tired. What do we... I mean, we're... Burial at space. We can't afford to get involved in a murder inquiry. Can't afford. So we walk away... From... Truman! Look. Scratched into the console, and now on the doors in red paint. Justice will be served.